Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio doing another page for Nano Jaomo, which is National Nonstop Journaling Month. And today I was inspired by a few different things. One of them being um, on my Instagram, I follow a group called Sisters with Heart in Art. And their prompt for this week is Shades of Blue. And that got to me thinking about the color blue and how it's associated with being sad, being blue, having the blues. And then the other prompt that I had, which is from my friends who are all doing this together, is hearts. And that really got me thinking about seasonal depression or sometimes called seasonal affective disorder or SAD. And I suffer from that myself, and I know a lot of other people do. And so I just wanted to make a page about that. And my original title for the page, or what I was going to put, was Don't Hide Your Heart. And so you can see me there making a heart, which is going to go in the background. And then I have a little very primitive girl there who going to be standing in front of the heart and that was my idea but then as I was going through all my papers which you can see a big pile that I pulled out there of all kinds of different colors of blue um, I found that little card that you saw a second ago with a really cool quote about um, working through life's problems and so I decided to put that on instead so what I'm doing is just um, auditioning papers and I'm going to be cutting out and paper piecing my girl. I made her on mixed media paper which is a kind of lightweight paper and then I'm just using that very sketchy pattern to make pieces and parts to put my girl together. And the first one is this shirt and that is a jelly print on deli paper so it's a lightweight paper with a lot of different cool colors on it and then next I'm gonna make her skirt and that is a piece of paper I assume it's a jelly print that someone sent me I'm in a lot of um, different little swaps a lot of tag swaps and and when people send their tag they often send other goodies which is really fun to receive and I hoard those and I keep them on a shelf with a bunch of other kinds of papers. I have all kinds of, I don't know, everything that you could possibly imagine that has any type of color or pattern. Um, my little magpie eyes are attracted to it. And I have to keep it. <laughs> You'll see a lot of that for this pace, paper piecing project today. So I've got her skirt and her little shirt. I had to make some, some cuts in to like put the arms behind the back. Next I'm gonna um, gonna do her legs I think and I'm looking for something light colored that's not blue. That is a piece of dictionary paper that I used in another project and it's it's a Latin dictionary and then it has some white gesso over it. Oh I'm making her collar first okay. She has a prim little collar she kind of looks like she's wearing a school uniform. <laughs> I never wore a school uniform. I don't know why that appealed to me, but it just did. These things happen. And I guess I didn't mention that as I'm doing this, I'm gluing the different pieces together just so that, just, just barely tacking them together with tacky glue. I'm tacking them together with tacky glue. Haha. -ha. Just so that the whole body stays together. I'm, I'm going to attach it to the page much more firmly later drawing in a few details there just to keep myself on track arms and she's gonna have a little placard of buttons down the front of her shirt okay now back to the uh, dictionary paper again um, to make <coughs> skin parts which would be her legs and her face and I didn't want those blue so that's why I'm using the gessoed dictionary scrap that I had left over from a different project. If you want to see that project, it's it's on my Instagram. I don't believe it's on my blog. 
Um, it's called Latin Cow, and it's it's very sp has a very special story to it. So that was why I had Latin dictionary pages. Now I'm uh, using another. I think that's a roll-off page on a deli print. I just went through my stuff and looked for blue, different shades of blue. So I'm covering up, covering up her little shoes there and then putting her legs on so that she doesn't fall down. That would be good. And then next is her head. I think I've um, sped this up now quite a bit because I'm sure it's getting a little bit repetitive. I didn't want to cut anything out. but I left um, the hair part on there around her face. I'm going to cover that up. But I just thought it needed a little bit more stability. And, and that dictionary paper is very thin and very old. It's flimsy. And that's another piece of deli paper I'm using there for the hair, which I think might have been on my palette at some point because it's just kind of got different splashes of color on it. I'm not sure where it came from. I save all that. I save my drop paper. I save everything because it's all going to get used eventually. I love collage, I love paper piecing, so there's just, I have a plethora, a veritable plethora of, <laughs> of stuff <laughs> which to use at this point. So now I'm going to make the big heart. I am making that out of kind of a, a piece of orange. Um, this is a roll-off page, which is a cardstock from when I was jelly, jelly printing. And orange and blue go together if you look at your color wheel. They complement each other, they're complementary colors. So I'm going to make the heart that color <coughs> so that it stands out from the page. But there's a couple white spots on it which I didn't like. That just where the brayer didn't touch down on the paper for some reason. So. I have another piece of paper. That's a piece of marbled paper, really pretty, which I got from someone. I wish I wished I knew where I got all these different papers, but I have so many different ones now that I no longer remember who sent me what, so I'm sorry about that, whoever you were. <laughs> but, uh, and then there's a little, just a little torn scrap of very bright magenta that I didn't even pick out. It was just on the desk. So I'm going to put that on there too, just trying to cover up some of those um, white splotches and make it more interesting. The more pattern you have, the more interesting it is to your eye. I think this is where I'm getting into using um, a medium now. And I think I'm going to talk a little bit about mediums because when I first started doing mixed media and I would watch people on Utah, YouTube, yeah, I was confused. Um, people are always talking about matte medium and how they use matte medium all the time. I'm using matte medium. Everybody says that. But if you're just starting out and you, you really have no idea what that is, let me kind of explain it to you. Um, I like matte look. The word matte just means that it's not shiny. And so I often use matte medium, which is a type of glue or additive, or in some cases, acrylic paint without any pigment. That's just what it is. It's a, it's a medium. And so many companies make it um, because it's used so often in mixed media. A lot of the mixed media artists have come out with their own matte medium but basically it's a medium which is matte. There is also glossy medium which makes your page shiny. It's the same thing, it just doesn't have the additive that makes it you know, flat without shine. And then in this case what I'm using is DecoArt's satin medium. So that kind of tells you the difference between the glues. It's, it all has to do with what the finish is. Is it going to be shiny or is it going to be a flat looking finish? Or in this case, is it going to be cut somewhere in between, just like paint that you might get on your wall having different finishes? The other thing to think about when you're using a medium of some sort is the 
amount of water or how liquid it is. And if you are going down thin paper, you want it more liquid. And if you're going down thick paper, you might want to go with a gel. So matte medium or other mediums with different finishes come in those different types of, of ways. This deco arts one is liquid and um, I do have a very thick piece of paper there and as you can see I'm trying to stick it, still trying to stick it. I keep putting um, more under the edges of particularly the heart and the skirt because those are heavier weight cardstock. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to glue down something very thin, go with a liquid. And then if you're going to glue down something thick, go with a gel. So if somebody was new, I hope that's, that helps you as you're going through trying to figure out what kind of glue to use. There's all different levels of it. There's, there's Mod Podge, there's um, Mod Podge, and then there's everything up to liquid golden or gel golden, which are expensive. and you just have to pick what you like. I have a lot of different ones. I collected them, trying to figure out what the different, you know, what, why there were so many different ones. So I have a lot of different ones. So now you see me cutting out hearts from all different types of paper. And those, those are a lot of jelly prints. There is some, um, the blue interior part of security envelopes. I like that. There's patterns on those, all different types. Some have stripes, some have plaid. Who knows? This is a piece of um, tissue paper that has music on it. I have other pieces of little scraps of jelly prints. Um, I think there's even some handmade paper. I'm um, nice and clean up. <laughs> I keep losing everything underneath the papers. So I have a small desk. Oh, and I guess I need one more for there. And then one up in the corner. So that was plaid. I like that. So I'm just cutting them all out. I sped this up again so that it would go by faster. And then I'm sticking them down with my brush and my um, Deco Arts satin. Decoffage. Trying to remember what they all are. They're just different pieces of stuff that I hoard. Or that I received from someone. That dark blue one is from my um, palette. It's very thick with paint. Oh, I know. That one was from an envelope that somebody sent me. Nail art. It was so cute. It had some different prints on it. Um, that one's the inside of an envelope. That one's a piece of a jelly print. is the homemade paper. Had a little bit of trouble getting that to stick down. Talk to somebody about it and don't just ignore that it's happening. This is the time of year that I start to get um, seasonally depressed. And uh, one treatment for it is to get more sun or to use a sun lamp that you sit in front of each day. And that seems to change the chemical, make it bug your brain somehow. I'm not really sure how it works. And to just realize that. It's not just you feeling it. I mean, there's a reason for it. It's not, it's not something you should ignore or, or try to logic your way out of. That's what I do. Like, oh, you, there's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. Don't be silly. 
doesn't work. <laughs> Just acknowledge that it's real and go on with your life. So now I'm putting on the um, saying and I'm just first sticking it down with tacky glue because it was easier than getting out more of the decoupage. Decoupage, however you say it. It's got pH, so it seems like it should be fog. But I am going to go back over it with the medium after it's stuck down. I'm just sticking it down real quick with this first. I do that with little pieces of things because it's easier to apply the glue with a nozzle type thing like that tacky glue. And I'm using my, um, it looks like it was a gift card at one point to, to make sure that my page won't bend in the middle. So I keep jamming it down in the middle to press everything down, make sure it's stuck, and that when I close the book and open it again, it's not going to come unstuck. So I went back over it with the medium, now I'm just uh, going back into places that seem to not want to stick, and going over those again. And then I believe now is when I get out the heat tool, yeah, there's a lot of heat tool drying during this, and I did snip it, like you see right there, I just snipped the heat tool out. I didn't figure that anybody wanted to watch me dry glue. <laughs> Now I'm getting out some different paints, and the first one I put out was Cerulean Blue Hue Liquitec, ba Liquitex Basics. I've got some white gesso there. I think I have light blue violet from Liquitex. And then the last one I put out is this um, Iridescent Blue Black Dyna from PBO. It's, it's an interesting one. It's, it's iridescent, it's shiny. So, um, I put a little bit of that on because there are shiny spots on my jelly prints in the background. That's also the reason, I guess I didn't explain, that's also the reason I used the satin finish instead of using a matte finish um, on my glue. Because if you put matte medium glue over something shiny, then it dulls it. So if you're into bling, and you want shiny iridescent things and lots of nice glitters and, and things like that, and then you go and glue it down with a matte medium, you've just ruined your whole effect. It took me a while to figure that out. I, I was probably kind of dense. It took me a long, me a long time. So just know that if you have something um, iridescent or shiny, use a shiny glue and then you'll be fine. So I'm going around with my finger and that, that page on the right had a lot of green in it um, in the original print there and I want to just kind of blue down the green so I'm just going around with my finger and finger painting the edges a little bit um, and then I go in and I blot with uh, baby wet that's about half dry there that's been laying on my table um, to let the the pattern of the paper come back through I don't I don't want to lose the jelly print pattern I just want it to be more blue than green. I guess who says I'm feeling green? Nobody. They say I'm feeling blue because that's the whole point of this page. Um, also on the left hand edge there was some white left where the jelly print didn't go all the way to the edge so I covered that up too with my finger painting and blotting and all that. It was like just a white edge. So now I'm going to peel it up from my uh, paper that I put underneath to save it, to save the page on the other side. And then j I just trimmed off a little edge of a heart there. And now more drying. Ha! And it's dry. I clipped it out again. <laughs> now I'm adding some white spatters. And I just took the uh, leftover gesso that was there put some water in it and then I'm using a fan brush and just uh, loading it up and then tap 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 and uh, the nice thing about having a glue medium all over your page is that if you get something somewhere where you don't want it you can just take your half dry baby wipe and wipe it off so I wiped the spatters off the girl and off the same okay now for shading I picked out a dark blue pit pit pins are 
India ink. And so they are dry. When they're dry, they're permanent. And also, if you're going over a glued surface like this, you have a few seconds in which you can blend it. So I'm just going along the edges of all my hearts and adding a shadowed edge and then blending with my finger. And at some point, I miss some of it. I don't show you every single bit of it because my camera kept turning off. And I could not figure it out for a while why it kept turning off. And I finally figured out that it was full. See, so there was a big skip. It was full because it's, it's my phone, it's my iPhone that I'm using to film this, my iPhone 6. And I delete every all the videos and everything, but apparently there's a folder in there that is called Recently Deleted. And it had all my videos and stuff in there. And so when I was deleting them from the camera roll, it still wasn't getting all the way deleted. So I finally figured that out, and I was able to turn my, my video back on without it turning off on its own, like over and over. Technology, what do we do? Just have to learn. I'm still very new. So I am going around the edges of the girl, and then I will go in and um, add some details with this pin, like their her little arms and the the waistband and around the collar and things like that. Um, adding a, sh a shadow there too, not just around the outer edge of it. Now I'm going back in with my white Posca pink pen, and I'm just doing scribbly lines on the inside of each heart. It's kind of like doing a highlight, but I'm going all the way around, and I'm not smearing, I'm just doing like double scribbling. And that makes those more visible on the background. Okay, I want to make it pop, so I'm going to do this. I want to make it pop. But that is kind of what it does. It kind of pops up on the page when you add that extra white. So I guess that's an app description. I'm doing the same things with the little simple details in permanent grid. After I had turned off the camera, I decided, after looking at it, that there needed to be one more heart down there in the bottom right corner. And it was just a blank spot, I didn't look at it. So I had to turn the camera back on so that I could add the other heart. If you like this video, please do what you do. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I love comments. I will answer your comments. Um, so that I know that you like it. 